I believe in unicorns. I believe in horses. I believe in elves. I believe in whales. And I believe in dolphins. What I believe in these mythical and real creatures is their ability to teach us more about ourselves and our connection to the universe. Since the beginning of humanity, borderland creatures, these spirit animals, have permeated all sorts of civilizations. They've helped us learn how to better our, understand our existence, our potential, and our connections to each other and the world. Today we're joined by philosophers, by writers, by musicians, by artists, decidedly different people with decidedly different views on the world. But I propose that today maybe we are not as different as we all think we are. In fact, by looking at the ubiquity of these borderland creatures, these spirit animals that have permeated all cultures since the beginning of time, there is a great deal of connectivity that binds all of us, all of us together. Now, it's important to note that this is very gossamer stuff. I, I recognize that I don't come here today with answers, but I come here today with questions. I come here today with questions about our past, questions about ourselves, and questions we may never truly answer in this lifetime. So let's first begin with the term borderland creatures. I came across this term a few months ago when I had heard about this opportunity to speak and started thinking about what I wanted to discuss. And so there was an article I was reading about psychologists who are using these animals. They're using horses and they're using dolphins in meditation, in therapy, to help people understand their own strength and their own capacity. A scientist from MIT who's working on the project said, Borderland creatures help us imagine wonderful other ways of being in the world. They're sources of power and motion and transformation. And I thought this was really interesting, but I also thought this is not a novel or new topic. This is something that people have been discussing for thousands of years. What I find interesting about this is that when we revere and worship these types of animals, we're really doing so with them as connectors and bi-directional connectors, connecting us downward into ourselves to learn more about our own potential and connecting us upwards to the earth and the universe. And you can reference, you know, even fairy tales from childhood. You know, you can look at things like Alice in Wonderland. Do we think that Alice, after stumbling down the rabbit hole, would have had the same realizations had she not met these fantastical creatures that met her on the other side? Or that Snow White may have learned the same things about herself had she not run into the seven dwarves? Now, fairy tale is one component, but we're also talking about something very serious when we think about this in the terms of spirit animals. They've existed as connectors for thousands of years, whether you look at the Hopi or the Maya or the Aztecs, Eskimos, Hindus, on and on and on and on and on. Everyone has had them. And they help define our culture. And they help define our place in the world. We can even look at legends written in a more recent time. Herman Hesse's Siddhartha. In a letter he wrote to a friend, he said, My Siddhartha does not, in the end, learn true wisdom from any teacher, but from a river that roars in a funny way. Here the borderland creature isn't even a creature at all, but it's nature and our ability to convene with it in a powerful and intrinsic way. So in this sense, borderland can be defined simply as a place just, immediately, just outside of our immediate grasp but entirely attainable through the connectivity of nature. So why does this occur? For one, creature, these creatures help us bridge a gap. Bridge a gap between the world we know and the world of the other. They live on the fringe of two worlds. And while we can't hold a conversation with a horse or swim with a pod of dolphins forever, I would challenge each of you to think about an instance where you have connected with an animal and deny that it didn't feel real and you didn't use language to do so. And for some cultures, these animals help explain the unexplainable. They provide guidance to places we can't quantify with the limits of science or with language. More often, our intentions with borderland creatures is a less concrete place. And this makes it tough. You know, we use words like perception and feeling, and immediately it starts to get squishy. It starts to get hard to, you know, quantify and be really uh, specific about. 
And this is polarizing. It's polarizing to a road of either belief or disbelief. But I believe the line between these two is much more nebulous than we give it credit. Rarely do we deny that these connections exist, but we often get too lost in attempting to understand why they exist. And attempts to understand why, we, we sort of try and define it vis-a-vis -vis the physical self or the essential self, and great thinkers and storytellers have tried to do this for many years. From Campbell to Jung, from the Brothers Grimm to Walt Disney. These have been pervasive thoughts throughout all of human history. Even to go as far back as Plato, Plato wrote that the body, of the, the body is of the material world, but our essence is from the world of ideas and thus immortal. Think about that. In a way, since our essence doesn't exist, beholden to the constraints of time and space, Plato claims that we're able to access universal knowledge, universal truths that span all of our existence. This is the nature of borderland creatures. This is why they've become part of our allegory for so many years. This is the, why they are important to our lives. Think about even the small flashes of universal connectedness, of interconnectedness that we experience each and every day. When you listen to that voice inside your head that tells you maybe don't walk down that street at this time. Or when you think of a friend and then moments later the phone rings and it's them on the other line. Our ability to interact and connect with each other in this sense is very real. Many of you have probably felt this with your own newborn children. Looking into their eyes, no language, no gesticular sort of abilities, you still feel a connection. It's still very much there. In a sense, children are also borderland creatures. They haven't been given a sense of self yet. They exist pantheistically in more of a we state where they do not have any singularity, where they do not have any sense of their autonomy. To me, this is a beautiful thought. It's a powerful thought. But sadly, it's something that we often relegate out of the realm of possibility. But let's suspend, just for today, our learned realities and attempt to embrace this idea for a moment together. Let's think how we can access that which lives in the borderland within ourselves. We have flashes of it every day, all of us, when we find ourselves wholly present and in the moment, but it's very difficult to hold on to that, to remain present. But what if? What if we were able to reconnect the wires? What if we were able to rejoin a sense of connection that we had in our earliest days in this life? What if we could find a sense of communion with, the, with what the borderland to creatures have taught us? Communion with nature and communion with each other. Let's try to reignite the connection to this place within ourselves. In doing so, I believe we may be able to connect to on a much richer level with each other and with our own potential. Now, I stand here today with the utmost humility. I recognize that what I present is nothing more than my thoughts and may be deemed too new age or amorphous or strange for anyone to subscribe to. But ask yourself, what if the ability to unlock something greater lived just inches from your grasp? What if we have more to learn than we think from the horses and the dolphins or the serpents or even each other than we give it credit? What if we're not as singular as we convince ourselves to be? So I ask you to consider your, the possibility. Attempt to connect to your borderland nature and the knowledge it holds. Because within each of us, our untapped potential, our shared existence in this world, and our true human energy may be the greatest mystery we have yet to unravel. Thank you for listening.